good. You suck. Get used to it. Let's begin. Jesus. There is a distinction to be made there. I have noticed Africans. Is that what you want to be? Is it Uju? I don't know. Maybe Jeff Bezos has got a little black book. Brutalized our mothers and fathers. Yeah, we did. When they were like, we're going to trade slaves. Like, shh, shh, not under our watch. If we just killed everyone we met, there wouldn't be any black people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because it's so Oh, ridiculous. yeah, the Arabs. Oh, the poor Arabs. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. King L, what? could not help themselves. Well, you knew we were going to do it, right? We had to go through the worst takes about the Queen's death. And what's remarkable, though, is it's actually a bunch of people posting their L's about the Queen and Britain. Being like, look how great she was. We suck. It's like... Um, yeah, I mean, this... this. Sorry, I just want to address the sort of descended from God thing. Like, we are a very secular country. Um, you know... This, there's a very there is a very prominent separation of church and state that exists and i i don't think that unless you're maybe deeply religious and and also you got you know, that intersection of being deeply religious and also a staunch monarchist most people do, don't think of the queen in those terms you know they don't conceptualize the queen in that way she's just a an old lady that sits on the throne and she's a bit of a figurehead for our nation and that's it you know, there isn't this kind of like, well, she was given the gift of God to be there to rule the, the, the country. You know, the way people talk about the conceptualization of this stuff is just so far removed. Hey, thank you very much for the $3.33. Um, like a lot of this stuff is Americans and they've just got no clue about, you know, what the reality is of what people think on the ground. It's crazy. And they just speak so confidently about it. That's weird for a bunch of communists. I would have thought you guys would have been more angry. But uh, but anyway, it's it's been kind of annoying, but in a way, actually not kind of annoying. Just watching. So you've got all the world leaders, as you just sh shown, being like, you know, the people of dignity. And what? What the? F oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at this. That's so good. That's fucking amazing. Look at that. <laughs> that <laughs> That's so good. I love it. I think there's a problem when I open up Imager. It kind of fucks up the video for some reason. So, yeah, I'd love to... Dignity and respect, actually being dignified. And then you've got the losers. All right, let's go back. Well, you knew we were going to do it, right? We had to go through the worst takes about the Queen's death. And what's remarkable, though, is it's actually a bunch of people posting their L's about the Queen and Britain. Being like, look how great she was. We suck. And it's like, that's weird for a bunch of communists. I would have thought you guys would have been more angry. But uh, but anyway, it's it's been kind of annoying. But in a way, actually not kind of annoying. Just watching, so you've got all the world leaders, as you've just sh shown, being like, you know, the people of dignity and respect actually being dignified. And then you've got the losers. And what are their takes? Resentful, you know, mean... <laughs> jealous. I think it's right to say the losers to Britain as well. Yes. The uh, Argentinians. Oh god. The it's, Irish. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the, oh, yeah Jesus, that's Spanish. a spicy that's a spicy Irish one. And black Twitter are just like, yes, we both suck. Um, and it's just like okay but there's also a distinction. is now the time for that flex? You there know? is a distinction to be made there. I have noticed Africans overwhelmingly understand and respect. Oh I didn't say African Twitter, did I? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I did not, no. Uh, Caribbean Twitter, we could call Listen, it. Listen, just to dispel any rumours, okay? I'm not watching this because I agree with their takes, all right? I just want to see what the rightoid um, narrative is about what's been going on, okay? I do not agree with this fucking the Irish are the losers thing. That's fucking insane. Um, but yeah, black Twitter. <laughs> Let's see what their takes on black Twitter are. Uh, Do you know, I spoke to Sargon recently, actually. I uh, spoke to Sargon a bit. Uh, in DMs. About a couple of topics. I'm I'm quite interested in, like, getting on this show. I think when I've done my face reveal, I'd quite like to, uh, you know, if possible, if it's something he'd be interested in doing, is going up and being on this show. I think that'd be fun. Go for chicken and waffles with him. I mean, he's not as bad as Nick Brent is. He's, he's a civic nationalist, right? I know people will be like, oh, he's... I don't think he's a Nazi. I don't think he's like... 
He's just a civic nationalist with some cringe social takes, some racist social takes. It's, it's molding. Hard, actually. Um, but anyway, before we start, if you want to support us, go to lowcities.com and check out this new article by John Tangney, Being a Conservative on Campus. It's very much what being a conservative on Twitter is like at the moment, in fact. But uh, this is an excellent article, obviously, because John's are always excellent. And there's an audio track as well if you don't want to have to read it. So anyway, let's begin with... Uh, before the news was broken <laughs> and there is a kind of culture in this country among the sort of millennials uh, the, the sort of millennial age sort of products of tony blair who don't understand why they should treat these things with a bit of dignity and we saw this from politics joe right so um they they posted a mm. joke yesterday if you can get the first image up yeah i suppose that it did sort of stem from millennials that grew up under tony blair perhaps um i i i'd say probably zoomers more so now are probably more responsible for that i think the kind of takes i generally see from millennials are not this kind of like wanton celebration of like her dying it's more so like you know rip queen elizabeth but he has some issues with the monarchy and it tends to be the Zoomers that are really rubbing their hands together and, and getting into the memes when it comes to her dying. Just so we can see it. Um, Wait, to be honest, most of it's from foreigners. I don't know, man. I think a lot of it is from like white people, a lot of white English American types. I don't, I don't know if it is foreigners, as, as you call them. But yeah. You know... I'm wondering the Queen's death for so probably the last Queen we'll see to which I'm a bitch, please. I'm gay. I know thousands of Queens and Kings. Okay, listen, Tim, look, I love the memes too about him running for UKIP, okay? But I'm going to defend Sargon of Akkad right now. My my pathway to the right is on absolute rocket fuel right now because of all the shit that's happened recently, okay? I'm this close to becoming a fucking f a Nazi, okay? I think the thing is with the UKIP run is it was very embarrassing for him and it was, like, funny to laugh at. And listen... I laughed as well. We all laughed, right? But here's the question. What content creator... Yeah, listen, I found it funny too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to take your toys away. I, I thought it was funny too. You're more than... I'll laugh at it if it ever comes up, okay? But I think what it does is it really... To make a serious point then, is that it demonstrates the flaws that come with running for public office when you've got a long history of being controversial online. And I think if you were to look at any content creator that's existed online for a period of time, I don't think there's a single one you could point to that hasn't been embroiled in some level of controversy that would be pointed out if you were to run for office. So I think it really proved that if you're a content creator, you're probably never going to be able to run for public office. Maybe IRI, sure. Maybe IRI. Yeah, IRI is probably an exception. Do you remember the rape take about Jessica Phillips? Yes, I do. I also remember how it got reported. UKIP rape tweet candidate. Like, Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Give back India the Kunia diamond. Mantis, why don't you come and get it? The exact moment renowned Republican Liz Truss poisoned the Queen. Now, it's not an unfunny joke. I've got to be honest, you know, because, you know, the, the news have gone out the queen's uh oh that's fine i mean that's just you know i think this is playing on the fact that liz trust is famously a republican and has been has said anti-monic statements in the past so yeah i think this is like fine i don't have a problem with this you know ill and so everyone's like, oh god you know this is it she had been ill a few times previously and yeah fine but this everyone was taking this one very seriously and as you pointed out earlier liz trust indeed was a republican when she was a liberal democrat and now she's the leader of the conservative government uh but uh but people were like well this is a bit bad taste isn't it you know and, uh, and they were like well should we have waited until she's dead or what <laughs> again like it's like milk yeah yeah we, this this isn't a social contract society we didn't vote for the queen like there's more to it than this this is inappropriate, I have to say. Uh, and so... Okay, listen, I'm sorry, Sargon, right? But this is someone who tweeted out about ele an elected representative of our, of our um, government um, or of our parliament, a politician. I wouldn't even rape you. 
and and now you're going to sit here and tell us what is and isn't appropriate on Twitter. Like, give me a fucking break, man. Are you kidding me? This is madness for, like, what I consider to be a very bland tweet. And he's going to he's gonna sit there and fucking wax lyrical about what is and isn't appropriate. Like, come on, bro. you got to be fucking kidding me on this shit. All we got from after her death was announced. All we got from the people of Twitter was giant L's. Just constant. I mean, this being a joke about it, but honestly, this is exactly what they were saying. I was colonized. Okay, loser, what now? You're 20. <laughs> yeah. And I don't care. I hate you. And I'm glad that you suffer. What do you want? You know, they, they, they like, haven't. Damn, that's like, pretty giga I know, I know. But like, even when they're like, "Oh, show me some, show me some sympathy." No, no, you're a, you're an insufferable Zuma communist. I've got no sympathy for you at all. Jesus, Sargon popping off. And yeah, exactly. I can see why I'm going to become a Sargonite again. Let's go. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, this does speak to. So, I think that there's this generational trauma thing which I, I i'm somewhat sympathetic to, i guess to some of the arguments that are made i guess that it it starts to fall down for me where you've got someone who's in a prestigious role in like a western institution who to my knowledge perhaps hasn't experienced any of the extremities or negative externalities of like colonialism whilst i don't have a problem with them having an academic conversation or pointing stuff out cool that's your sort of job i find it weird when people do have this conception of like well i was colonized and it's like were you were you colonized like you know yeah sure you there's a history there which has been bad for your family and i'm totally on board with that and i'm sympathetic to certain concepts around that but it's kind of like well where do you where do you draw the line there and if you are someone who has lived and benefited within a certain society and benefited from the fruits of that it's like I guess I find it hard to understand the conceptualization of, oh, I've been colonized, you know? Um, and yeah, sometimes I think people use generational trauma as an excuse to just be a piece of shit, basically. It, it, this is about me. Yeah, exactly. It, it, now of all times, you could have posted this yesterday or the day before, and I wouldn't care. I'm like, oh, that's terrible for you. You know, but now you're using it. You're trying to weaponize what you believe to be your wounds against Britain, the concept of Britain, the British public, the monarchy, and the history of this country. It's like, no, no. If, if that's where we're going, if that's the road we're going down, good, you suck. Get used to it. Let's begin. Jesus. Right? So look at this one. This, this, this is just amazing. This, this, yeah, was right. this is the famous incredible. one. Incredible. I heard the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. Oh dear, Uja. Oh dear. This uh, this person uh, got the tweet deleted. Twitter were like, nah. <laughs> you, 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 this this violated the Twitter rules. What rules? Who knows? What? Is he not going to share the other banger? Maybe he didn't see it. There's another banger as well that she put out that people might have missed. I don't know if he's going to show it or not. Did you see this? Look. <laughs> you, you stink. You mean like your pussy. Jesus. Jesus. But, you know? I, I don't actually think that violates the written rules. I don't think it I does. I think someone at Twitter realised, oh crap. Now is not the day. Now is not like, the day. The, the emotional <laughs> feeling, uh, yeah. I don't know what it's like in the colonies or elsewhere, but I mean, in the UK, it, this is really disgusting. Yeah. And so I imagine someone at Twitter UK was just like, right, go, no, 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 yeah. so. Which is good. Uh, and so, I mean, she'd continue posting other things. If you go to the next one, she's like, uh, replying to someone who's like, yeah, that's, it, you scroll up so you can see the, what she's replying to. But the person is like, well, that's a hateful thing to say. And she's like, I only wish my hatred had the effect on her that her monarchy had on my people. It's like, oh God, I'm hearing losers. The yeah. echoing screeches of losers throughout the ages. Is that what you want to be? Is it Uju? You want to be this just <laughs> intergenerational? Fuck me. <laughs> He called it Uju like that. What the fuck? Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I wasn't a fan of this tweet. I, I really don't get this idea or concept. Like, they're saying that it's good the tweet got removed. I don't agree with that. I don't... I mean, I, I guess... I guess there maybe is some clause in the TOS that maybe justified it. I'd have to double check. 
But I don't really think, to me, I don't think that's something that you should have removed. Like, that's something that should easily be covered by whatever concept of free expression you have. Like, to say, I wish you... I think, I think you should be able to wish an excruciating death upon someone. Like, what... It's not like... It's not... I mean, maybe you could argue they're like going to get their followers to go and torture them or some shit that sounds insane but i think you should have the right and ability to call for the torturous death or, or like you know the horrific death of your enemies who perceived enemies right i want the right to be able to sit on twitter and wish an excruciating death to a cancer riddled child because they looked at me funny once i want that right i want that right and i think everyone should have that right national loser my people my people lost Okay, my people didn't. Now what? But also, what do you mean, my people? Ah, well, she might, she's a, she's an American critical race theorist, so somehow the but, British monarchy is bad. But that's the thing, isn't it? It's <laughs> I, I am descendant. <laughs> let's be charitable and say she is descendant of American slaves. She has some kind of uh, you know, victim points. It's like the the hatred of my people. No, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's a side of the line that's not nice, rather than explicitly calling for violence. Yeah, I'd agree with that. From a website, she has a website, a university professor and researcher in applied linguistics, critical sociolinguistics, and critical discourse studies, primarily examining race, gender, sexual, and social class identities in new language learning through experience of African American students. Yeah, sounds absolutely fucking insufferable, to be honest. <laughs> Like you're Hang on now, I've got the King of Benin on the phone. <laughs> oh, he says suck it. Oh, sorry, I don't know what, don't know what to tell you. Kelly Badenock's just like, <laughs> <Yeah>. loser. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, loser, what do you want? You know. Oh. But th this person is a professor of applied linguistics, anti-racist, anti feminist, blah, 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 right? And uh, and weirdly enough, it was Jeff Bezos that drew attention, drew attention to this person because he retweeted her being like, is this someone who supposedly makes so a tweet? I heard a rumor about this, which maybe you can help me out with, chat. The rumor I heard is that this person, Uju Anya, apparently supported the unionization efforts of Amazon. So as much as people were saying Jeff Bezos based for this, let me just see if I can find any information about it. Like there's a picture There was some sort of picture of them together, but it was on Twitter, so I wasn't sure. I don't know if anyone's got any further information. Oh, and he said some bad words. Hey, F bombs, thank you for the raid. Hmm. Yeah, look, it says it here in this article. Would you believe the first time Bezos mixed it up in an indirect way? And all we should tweet a picture of herself with Chris Smalls, the union organizer in New York, who led the first organized labor victory at Amazon warehouse facility. So, you know, it's a very tenuous link. Like, I'm not, I don't think that, I don't think that Jeff Bezos remembered and was like, ah, this is the person that took a picture with that union guy. I'm going to fucking shit on her. Possibly, maybe, but yeah, it's probably more likely that you just saw it on the timeline. Although, hmm, I don't know. It was getting retweeted a lot. But yeah, I don't think it's anything substantive to point out. It was just a little interesting point more than anything else, I guess. No, I think this is a different article. Here we go. Yeah, there it is. Look. Oh, no. Well, oh, I don't know. This has got like 13K likes. I don't know. Maybe Jeff Bezos has got a little black book and he keeps the name of all the black people that have wronged him and he made a note. Uju Anna. Remember. Remember this name. I think it's a bit tenuous, but I like the, I like the idea that Jeff Bezos is so petty that he remembered this and then when she had some controversy, he made sure to shit on her publicly. I like that story better because it's funny. Ah, yeah, this is what I saw. So you see the faculty member under the bus. Amazon will provide $2 million support to CMU's Computer Science Academy for the next three years.
is this is this a smoking gun? I don't know, man. I think the most realistic thing is that Jeff Bezos saw it floating around and thought, I'm going to shit on this. I don't know, man. Wait, the wor- working to make the world better? I don't think so. Wow. It's like, okay, Mr. Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Monarchist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> what? <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> But uh, she works at a university, and the university even came out and denounced her, which is remarkable. Uh, if you can get to the next one, you can see the uh, university being like, well, we don't condone the offensive and objectionable messages posted by this black nationalist radical in response to the death of Queen Elizabeth II because it would look bad. Yeah, not because they have any ideological problems with it. Well, that's exactly what Leo posted underneath, actually. Wait. He was like, don't gaslight us. You hired her exactly because of the views and values she shared today. Don't pretend you find these... Wait, what? The... <laughs> yeah, in higher education, one of the... Aren't these the same people that argue that, like, higher education should be a ground for, like, free ideas and concept and discussion, even ones you find offensive? Exactly. Well, that's exactly like, what Leo... I, d- I don't know, man. I-, I think that, like, you know, they're just supporting the right of one of their professors to have a you know, bold take on something. I think the reality is what we'd need to see is if a right winger posted an objectionable comment, what their response would be to that and whether it would be the same or whether maybe they might take some action against them. And if they did, that would demonstrate that there is an inconsistency. Um, But other than that, I don't know, this just seems like a generic statement of like, you know, we don't agree with this, but we allow our people to have free speech. I posted underneath, actually. He was like, don't gaslight us. You hired her exactly because of the views and values she shared today. Don't pretend you find these views unappealing <clears throat> now that the death of a monarch has made them temporarily unfashionable. Take some ownership. That's a great statement by Leo. Yeah, that, is a, that is actual gold. Yeah, that is exactly. That's pure gold, right? Uh, anyway, so I thought we'd go to um, Nigerian royalty next. <sighs> for, for people who don't know. Uh, so this is Dr. Shola. Uh, Dr. Shola is very persistent on Wikipedia.com mm. to, to hide her own origins. People have updated it many a times, showing her tweets where she boasts about being descended from Nigerian royalty. But since she's become Wait, a what? massive left-wing activist in the UK... Est- is that true? Is that true? Hmm, interesting. I need to find out more about that, really, before I comment. Seeing ...on the royal family. It's unfashionable. She's been trying to hide it. Mm. But isn't that interesting? That, that Suddenly her attacking Queen Elizabeth, well, it's, it's fellow royals of a certain class. Because, I mean, my family isn't in any way related to the monarchy. I'm not descendant of a king somewhere. But Dr. Schuller is. And so she's like, yeah, look at that victorious monarchy over there. I wish our monarchy had kicked ass like their monarchy. <laughs> no, Dr. Schuller, unfortunately it didn't. Unfortunately, your monarchy sucked. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> But uh, I love this, right? No whitewashing the Queen's legacy. You can't revere her as a global leader and not acknowledge her as a colonizer queen of British Empire. So, oh dear, this the, the envy coming out here. You know, Doctor, if only I was the colonizer queen of the Nigerian Empire. That's wait, is <laughs> I, don't, I, I I'm not picking up any envy personally. I think this is just like you know boilerplate. Um, oh, colonizer British Empire. Yeah what I'm hearing, right? She had no credibility on systemic racial inequality, which she didn't stand out against, but benefited from. It's like, well, she was a decolonizer. Like it was under, it was under her tenure that the British empire was decolonized. So what possible place to complain do you have? I mean, as I mentioned, I can only think of one place that we did colonize under her rule. And it was Rhodesia because the Rhodesian government asked us to do it so that we could hold free and fair elections so it could immediately be decolonized to become Zimbabwe. Yes. But like, that's the one- He's just so your harmonicky tongue to him. One act of colonization, it, it was to decolonize somewhere. At best. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know how objectionable this is, really. This just, like I say, this just seems like boilerplate, lefty, you know, I, it just doesn't seem that objectionable to me. I mean, she's not even, like, celebrating her death, although she would probably would given the chance. It seems like she's just trying to highlight what she perceives as these issues with revering her as a leader. So I don't have a massive problem with this one. If you can even really consider that an act of colonization. Right? Nonsense. But anyway, so Doc, Doc Scholler continues, of course. Uh, oh, wait, Britain there's is the more. great country today because of her, says Liz Truss. Oh, okay. Go on, Doc Scholler. 
The Queen can't be the reason for Britain's greatness, but not the reason for atrocities. As colonise a Queen and doing nothing about systemic racism today, people can like her for one and dislike her for the other. So, well, I mean, that's a fairly reasonable sentiment at the end. I guess my question would be, what is it you want her to do about systemic racism that doesn't, by its nature, contravene her role as the head of a constitutional monarchy where the queen is not supposed to make political decisions. I just, I just don't think that's possible. And this, again, is another one of those arguments which implicitly suggests that the queen is in, in, in a position where she ought to be able to do something about political issues that we face. Where my perspective is, no, she shouldn't. She should not do anything about systemic racism because the government are the ones that should do stuff about systemic racism, not the Queen. The Queen should just approve, disapprove, whatever is comes from government. Uh, that is actually contradictory, but it just doesn't make any sense, Doctor. You, and again, like, sorry, what's the official title of Nigerian royalty? Maybe I should use that for Dr. Shola. Her Royal Highness. Her Royal Highness, Dr. Shola <laughs> Moz Shog Bamimu. Uh, but there's something interesting about those two examples, that university mm. and this one, which is that any other day of the year, any other day of the century, frankly, we have this problem that the left dominate the cultural space mm. in every possible institution. When it comes to the monarchy, this is the one mm. place in England, and we had it with the Jubilee, mm. where when the leftists do their shrieking nonsense. Wouldn't the correct action as a queen be to advocate for the abolishment of the monarchy? That just, I mean, sure, like, yeah, if the, if the next monarch was like, right, we're going to abolish all of this, great. But it just seems like a fantastical expectation that someone is going to, you know, abolish themselves. But yeah, sure. It, 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 of course, I don't like the monarchy. If that happened, great, I'd be happy with that. <coughs> but I guess, yeah, that probably is the only thing they could do with their power that wouldn't contravene what we have, I guess. Everyone disavows it. Everyone yeah. shuts it down. It's like, we have nothing to do with that. Please don't say we have anything to do with this. Yeah. Whereas any other day, she could have tweeted some crap like this about colonizing oh, university. Oh, yeah, she, and she would have done. Whatever. And the university would have actually shaken her hand and given her a grand. Oh, yeah. And be like, yes, please come work for us. Yeah. But anyway, moving on from Dr. Shola. Uh, when have black folks ever gotten the chance to mourn? Because British people have got two weeks off to mourn because the Queen died. It's like, well, that actually does include black people in Britain. They have to Ooh. get two weeks off too, or 10 days or whatever it is. And no one gets... Oh, I mean, there isn't 10 days off. The Sargon spreading misinformation there. There isn't not the 10 days off thing. It's just a, a formality. Um, but in this, yeah, I don't know. It feels like this person is segregating out white British people and black British people. Like... <laughs> Oh no, it's that video again. The woke and the racist degrees. Oh no. They're doing the meme. They're doing the meme. If you're if you're black, I still consider you British, okay? And if you want to mourn, you can mourn. You can mourn for whatever you like. You know, if you want to mourn for whatever issues that, that you face as a black person in the UK, go ahead. Like, this tweet's fucking stupid. And in inherent within it is some weird perception of segregation too. I don't know, man. This is cringe. Cringe, cringe, cringe from Miss... Uh, sorry, Doctor. Dr. Jen Jackson. It's a day off, actually. Oh, well. Uh, that she's thinking days off work. She's a moron. Yes, uh, I was going to say, I didn't actually... I'm not actually aware that anyone gets days off work. Like, so, the, the rule is that we are meant to get a bank holiday if it's announced by the palace for the funeral and for the coronation, of course. Right, okay. Not the days of mourning. No. So this person, again, knows nothing. Br brilliant academic research by Dr. Oh yeah, as well, yeah, this is, yeah, Brits get two weeks off. That's not true either. Hang on a second. This is even stupider than I first realized. Yeah, British people do not get two weeks off. That's fucking insane. Jem and Jackson uh, here. I'm an academic and I can't even do <laughs> Google searches. So. I could have looked up the Wikipedia page, but I didn't. But uh, but I love the way, the, the idea that it's like, yeah, so all of the British people get the days off to mourn and black people get back into the mines. I don't know. What, like, what, what does she think is going on here? Yeah, London's yeah. still at work. We're all actually just partying. <laughs> yeah. Really. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then the, the, there's a Twitter account called Leftism for You, which gave us just a, a selection of just some of the just dumbest and worst takes, right? The worst part about the death of Queen Elizabeth is that Donald Trump hasn't been arrested for espionage, sedition, or treason. It's like, really, now's the time, is it? Why would you make it a... 
God, this is like fucking American centrism to the max. Oh, Queen Elizabeth's there, but what about the American Donald Trump? Give me a fucking break. Jesus Christ. There's a thing about Yankees and the monarchy, isn't there? There is, and it's just deranged. I mean, if you can just scroll down through this thread, you can just see it's just like bad take after bad take. And it's like, the Queen isn't going to see your jokes about her, but your friends who are 150-year-old genocidal racist British Congress will. What? Yeah, it's just nonsense. Name the person you're talking about, Jeremiah. Name the genocide. Okay. <laughs> oh my fucking god. The point of this joke is people will often say, don't mock a fat person because the fat per the fat celebrity isn't going to see your joke, but your fat friends will and they'll be upset. So it's mocking that concept in this situation because any joke you make about the queen, there isn't a someone that you're going to know that's going to be upset by it like there would be if there was a fat person or something. So that's the point of that joke. It's a kind of absurdist play on that concept. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't happen. Like, yeah. okay. It's just nonsense. No, it's, but it's just, you know, losers posting their else. <laughs> <coughs> oh, we, we got crushed by the British. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Cry harder. I just... yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's the thing. It's not a racial thing either. <laughs> they have these black nationalists trying to make it about race. Yeah. But you'll notice that it's, you know, the Irish and the Argentinians and, the, you know, everyone else. <laughs> what did the Argentinians post? <laughs> there was a guy I saw. I, I don't, yeah, I don't, like, they're talking about the Irish. I genuinely have just, I've seen barely anything. Like, the only thing I saw from uh, Irish Twitter was the Sinn Féin, which is the Irish political party for, like, reunification. Um, and was like, it was like, oh, please don't do use... Basically, they said about the Twitter guidelines for their members. And it was essentially saying, like, in as many words, the subtext is don't go onto Twitter and start fucking memeing about the Queen. So, yeah, I don't know. I've not seen much from Irish Twitter or whatever. Or on Argentinian TV, he opened a bottle of champagne and was drinking it and like trying to make a big thing about it. The dancing in front of the palace was months ago. That wasn't isn't a recent thing. It's mm -hmm. super high energy, but you could tell it was so forced. Mm -hmm. Like this is utter cope that you just, you're a loser. Well, why don't you go and open that uh, bottle on Las Malvinas, mate? You know, <laughs> again, just like- <laughs> Apply for a visa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, sorry, losers. I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, you suck. But anyway, Britain colon colonized Africa, didn't you know? I did know, let's be honest. Britain violently colonised Africa. They brutally murdered our... The Lizzie in a Box football fans chat was in Dublin. Okay, I don't know if you were here earlier. We were watching football chants where a bunch of football fans were calling someone a pedo. Like, take football chants with a pinch of salt, okay? That's not necessarily a genuine expression of their, like, perspective on, on someone. It's just they say fucked up things in the football box because I think it's funny. Our ancestors. They brutalized our mothers and fathers. Yeah, we did. When they were like, we're going to trade slaves. We're like, shh, shh, not under our watch. Uh, <laughs> or if they tried to kill us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> if we just killed everyone we met, there wouldn't be any black people. <laughs> like, that's how that works. <laughs> 99 red balloons playing in the background. <laughs> just, this is the true legacy of Queen Elizabeth as far as Africa is concerned. Right. When we appeared in Rhodesia, when Cecil Rose turned up, the wheel hadn't been invented. <laughs> Like, the locals actually hadn't invented, like, a wheelbarrow. And when we left, there were jet planes. Yep. But, you know, our evil civilization was destroying their glorious nothing. Yeah, this is... We returned to hell where we came from. I, I think, like, you know... I don't think you need to go down the route of this, like, super reductive take of, like, oh, yeah, it was all positive, they had a fucking jet engine... The, the, the horrors and the crimes of colonialism and the brutality and all of this stuff is well documented, um, if not necessarily taught. I don't think you need to go to this insane reductive take of, well, it's all fucking upsides. I think that we can just have an honest conversation about whatever positives came about and, you know, the vast negatives that also came about as well. It just seems crazy to me that we've just got to go, well, what about the jet engines, though? You speak English now, don't you? Like, Jesus, come on. That's fucking insane isn't it you know um, <laughs> but anyway again like the, again just massive l being posted just being like oh we we suck and you guys kicked our asses okay fine moving on down with colonialism i love this so much like it's it's literally like international like <coughs> international l day the, the irish Arabic, the Afri the africans the arabs and the people of the caribbean were all massacred under the colonial realm of elizabeth no, they weren't. They weren't actually. But no. let's let's assume. Let's just take it. Why are there okay. so many Arabs? Okay, <laughs> fucking L. What? Do, what? Do, 
but also I, I love seeing Arabs do this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's so Oh, ridiculous. yeah, the Arabs. Oh, the poor Arabs. <laughs> oh, God. What if they ever oppressed Arab. anyone? Oh, God. <laughs> you know. You've oppressed the Africans. Oh, don't look at us. <laughs> yeah. I don't know blacks, black people in all of Arabia. Wait, what did that? You took a lot of slaves. Why are there none there? Yeah, like, really. Just, just get googling that. Yeah, you, but you um, castrated them all. But I love. But this. also, how's that United Arabia going? Brilliantly. How is it that there? Are, that just how is it that there was you know, Arabic spoken in Spain and India? How did that happen? No, anyway, right. Uh, so they say you know we will never forget. We will resist till all our lands are liberated from the shackles. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Arabs. I think the history with the Arabs is a bit more complicated than, uh, than I mean, this tweet is suggesting, right? I, d I don't know. Listen, I'm not an expert on, like, history and all that shit, so I don't fucking know. But uh, the Africans, yeah, will take, you know, the British Empire will take the L on that one. The Irish, yes. The Caribbean, sure. But the Arabs? I don't know, man. I think the Arabs have got their own fucking problems with colonization, though. It's a colonialism. <coughs> what? What? You... <laughs> what are you talking about? You're gonna have to liberate all of North Africa from the colonialism of the Arabs. So. Sure, but like, okay, from British colonialism, okay, that happened about fifty years ago. So, I mean, I mean, maybe the, the Pitcairn Islands. He's upset about still. British Virgin Islands, maybe? Maybe, but didn't mention them. <laughs> no. You know? They don't feel very oppressed either. They keep doing referendums and keeping us. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but then the next one, of course. Uh, and I love the people under the boot of Elizabeth. It's like, really, no one thought that. No one thought it. It's just so artificial, right? But anyway, the next one, racism was outlawed in England in the 60s and it's been allowed to thrive. So why should black and brown people mourn? Um, I, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, in the, in the 60s, you couldn't say the N-word, whereas now, in the more liberal times... <laughs> it's just constant. <laughs> the BBC is like there's N-words in Africa. You know. Yeah, it's no, it, 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 it's amazing. And just like, it's just so delusional. It's like, no one thinks this. No one thinks this. But also, again, you just make yourself sound really in, incompetent and pathetic. But again, any other day of the year, these people would be taken seriously by the mainstream. Well, incidentally, any other day of the year, they wouldn't have said something like this. And we've got a great example from Trevor Sinclair. If you can give the next one. Uh, from 2020? Just two years ago, it was like, our queen looked so fragile when addressing the nation earlier, but she was so genuine with hum humility. Her majesty still inspired the United Kingdom. Wait a second, though. That first tweet, was that in reference to her? Maybe I misread it, but... Oh, no, sorry, I misread it. Yeah, no, she... <laughs> that is just, like, insane. That's well, actually... That is, that is a fair, that is a fair criticism. Uh, from yeah, 2020? absolutely. How the fuck are you going to, two years ago, tweet this? And then now you're going to tweet out, we're not going to mourn. Like, it's madness. And this just strikes me as someone who's interested in, like, gaining clout through having the right take that's going to be amenable to people. Um... Like, how are you going to say that about the Queen two years ago? And they'd be like, I'm not going to mourn her. <laughs> the current thing meme, yeah. Just two years ago, it was like, our Queen looked so fragile when addressing the nation earlier, but she was so genuine with hum humility. Her Majesty still inspired the United Kingdom. Right. So this... Two years later... Is utter yes. performance by this... Tw <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Everything about this is performative. Because, of course... Elizabeth didn't reign over a giant world-spanning empire. She was the queen of the decolonial period, and now they're all independent, and so their problems are all indigenous problems. They're your own problems. If your country sucks because it's full of... Uh, Corruption. Yes. Violence. Socialism. And, you know, just... The, Constant infighting. Yeah, lack of rule of law, dangerous streets, all these other things that, you know, have arrived now that the British have gone back to hell. Um, you know, that you, you can sit there going, well, this is the British fault. It's like, mm, but it's not, though. Mm. You know, actually take some responsibility for once in your life. Like we left you... Africa, Arabia, and Ireland. Like we left you with trains? Yeah. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think Ireland... I think Ireland have got a legitimate criticism or complaint in that they are still existing in, in a in a split situation where a portion of their island belongs to us, essentially. I think that there's a call for unification which should be heard and should be dealt with. In terms of, like, other countries, there's going to be a complexity there that I think you need to investigate before you can really come to any conclusions. So I think that there's probably an argument for some of these places that have had sovereignty handed back that have gone into like deeper issues that perhaps there's some blame on their part that it should be shouldered 
Also, though, I think you need to deeply look at the intricacies of the effects of, you know, colonialism historically and see what kind of effects it's had on the country, because there's definitely going to be things that would have happened, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago, where you'll still be feeling the effects of it now, even if we've handed sovereignty back. So I just I think this is a, another kind of reductive take where it's like it's going to be a situational thing dependent on what the country is and what the history of that nation is, you know? <clears throat> and a working service? Yeah, civil and service. As yeah. one Af Hospitals. As one Chinaman in a very famous documentary yes. founded, he turned back up and went, they left you these things and you destroyed them. We didn't even have these in China and now we have bullet trains. It's also tiresome. <laughs> anyway... Uh, the next one, she was the queen of many African, Caribbean, and Asian nations in our, grandparent, in our parents' generation and is still a leader of the Commonwealth. Her family oversaw the transatlantic slave trade. Her wealth comes both directly and indirectly from screwing black and brown people globally. It's literally it. It's the screwing black and brown people fund. The Queen Elizabeth fund of Donation. slavery. <laughs> donate, yeah. please. Exactly, yeah, donate, please. Just, just this bears no resemblance to reality, you know? And right. it's... It's like, okay, well, I tell you what, Britain should completely repent its uh, interaction with this transatlantic slave trade and uh, restore to Benin that which was taken. <laughs> um, I mean, the, Li Li the Libyans did. Yeah, they, they did. They took that back. Yeah, they did. I think the Congo's still at it. It's going great in Africa. Now that those evil colonialists aren't there. Anyway, next one. Uh, Africa, of course, was a very wealthy place. It wasn't tribesmen who hadn't invented the wheel. It was actually... Um, Wakanda? Yes, obviously Wakanda. The Cecil Rhodes turned up and found Wakanda. Yes. And was like... Oh. And then... I mean, this is just like, so stupid. Like, obviously, there's a big gap between not having the wheel and fucking Wakanda. Like, I know what he's referencing there. Like, a you know, a resource-rich nation that's thriving technologically. Like... I don't know, maybe there's an in-between. I mean, I don't know the history of it, but I just think this is an absurd dichotomy that they're creating to kind of mock whatever this person says, I guess. Quote, Britain stole untold trillions from Africa. I don't think we did. I actually don't think that was true. You didn't have untold trillions there, Adam H. Johnson. Um... <laughs> I mean, I don't know the, the exact figure on it, but, like, what about all the fucking resources we took en masse from Africa during fucking, you know, the height of colonialism? You know, the, the jewels, the diamonds, like, that's, that's a fucking crazy take. Like, what is he, like, yeah, there was, like, untold natural resources in Africa that we absolutely fucking scooped up, you know, across a period of generations. Like, come on, man, like, what... Does he does he think because we because there wasn't like you know printed money bills and we were stuffing you know African dollar bills into a big swag bag running away it doesn't count like no natural resources count you know yeah strip mining of resources um, the you know slavery um, you know what's that worth how much labor we took you know in, in unpaid labor through slavery resources um, trade I don't know like loads of stuff you know. Um, feasibly, yeah. Um, Africa couldn't extract the, res the the resources, though. Well, sure, but they're still African. They're still they're still. I think if you've got a resource in your land, whether you can extract it or not, that's still your resource within your fucking border, right? So the idea that we go in, oh, it was our machines that went and dug all of it up. There were people there. Like, what are you doing? Is there a loner box video about the wheel thing? Obviously a native African name. <laughs> you know, I can see the, the uh, skin tone from here. Yeah. It doesn't... I, <laughs> go on. This argument. This the, nonsense. The, ponce, the most possible steel man of it you could ever hear. And you get it from Robert Conquest, yeah. just laying out. It was like, right, okay, so the argument is that we turned up and we built mines that they didn't have. So yep. they actually couldn't access any of the raw materials below the earth, but we yep. could. And then we took those raw materials, uh, not a lot of them, on a national scale, now that we found out there's so much more there. Uh, Chinese are doing that for us. Do you know However, because we took those raw materials, that's the money we took, fine. Uh, what did we spend to get them? 
Mm. It's it's not even worth the price we paid for the garrisons mm. of these countries. Well, the, the reason that we don't we, we decolonize is because we just couldn't afford the empire because the empire cost us money. Like it's all documented because yeah. if, if we, we were had money, why would we not? Stay? We, so we we spent money to extract resources from another another country. Like what is this conception that oh there's another country like. There's another country that exists that have got resources in. They can't mine it themselves. So we're going to go in and we're going to extract it. And exactly, that's another point as well. Who does he think was operating the machinery exactly? Who exactly does he think was operating these? Was it fucking white British people that were getting sent over there to operate this mining operation? Hmm, I don't fucking think so. So even if you want to make that argument, what about the fact that there were people that we enslaved, you know, and um, took advantage of and, and, and exploited in order to um, mine these materials? Like, even if you want to say, well, they couldn't mine the material themselves, well, we forced them to do it. We forced them to use our machinery to mine resources from their land to take it back to our advantage. God, it's fucking insane because we had writing right and, and so we wrote records and we actually know exactly how much the empire cost in taxes every year and weirdly the british why would you let africa become a powerhouse in them times <laughs> we don't want to let the blacks get too much power we need to make sure they're kept down so we're gonna have them we're gonna have them enslaved operating our machines come on jesus christ man people were prepared to pay because they thought it was a good thing to have around that was why we had this empire, right? Well, but what I find really interesting... It was charity. What I find really interesting about this, right, is that almost everywhere in sub-Saharan Africa, wealth is valued in cows. That's how wealth is valued, right? How many cows you own. Go, sorry, go back, John. Right, we're just going to talk about this for a second, right? So if we stole untold trillions from Africa, right? That's a lot of cows. That is a lot of cows, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I mean, literally, you buy your wife by providing cows. This is literally what African tribes still do in the modern era, right? And so when we turned up, we must have been like, right, look at all, look at these herds that they've got. <laughs> like, how many millions of cows did we ship back to Britain? Like, I want to know. I want to know the movable wealth of the Africans was in uh, this is Yeah, this is just a fucking, I, I don't even know what the point of this joke is. It's so stupid. Cows. I'm not even joking, right? I, yeah, I, I think if you go to South Sudan, like Miles does, you will actually find that they live like they did. Yes. They, they didn't actually yes. have some Wakanda beforehand that they yes. remember. There's cave drawings of like, oh, yes. this is what we used to be before the evil British turned up. Yes. With their devil horns. And uh, like the... the, the, the I, I and the thing they... is, as well, like, I don't even think that you need to go full on, you know, soy woke scold or whatever this person's saying. Like, I think you can, you can find... You can break some bread on this point as well. You know, like... I mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure if you presented the concept, well, hang on a second. Yes, we provided the machinery. Who provided the labor? You know? And if these people are providing the labor, like, are they not entitled to some level of reward for the work that they do? And in some cases, this stuff that was happening was slavery. We enslaved these people to operate the machines that brought about these resources for us. So yeah, I think I think that you know you don't even need to go to this level, even with their own arguments. There's things you can point out that go beyond just well, we had the machine, so we went over there. And the other thing as well is, does that not completely destroy the concept of like having a border? Like these people are very strong on borders. Isn't one aspect of borders that you get to control the resources that are within your borders and you get to have say over who gets access to them? Like, for example, if America, you know, how would people react if fucking America came over to within the boundaries of our country and started mining oil or started mining our resources without our permission, without our request? That would be like an act of war. Do you know what I mean? But obviously with Africa, because there was, I, I presume, a level of developmental advantage that we had from the uk um we were able to just essentially go over there and just steamroll them and just do whatever we wanted so it, it comes across as like a might makes right type situation china are doing that right now with africa well you were defending it earlier so what's your problem years ago hearing this apparently there's a, i think it was a maasai story where basically they justify stealing other people's cows by saying well look all the cows on earth belong to us and they were stolen from us and so we're actually stealing them back it's our big brain very clever but um <laughs> so, so yeah the, the the cow 
transit system from but again Af notwithstanding my disagreements with the arguments they're making here um i think that again it's just kind of trying to tie in the oh the queen's bad because of historical atrocities which i just think is a silly argument africa to britain it's actually <laughs> very unexpected. i don't even disagree with the tweet the, uh, i mean agree with the tweet it's just missing yeah for some reason so anyway let's go on to the communist party I don't know why we allow a communist party, but uh, us and them, the vast gap in wealth between ourselves and British royals is growing by the year. I can't believe the royals are wealthier than I am. I hope that was a fucking joke, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shocking, really. I yeah. thought they'd be poorer than us. Yeah, exactly. Got the Queen and Dr. Schola and then the peasants at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no longer is Britain's economy able to fund the royals' employment support allowance. Oh, there we go. Thank you. For foreigners who might not know, <clears throat> Uh, the economic argument is complete bunk as well on the monarchy. They, they own so much land. They make so much money from it. And we actually get a lot of that as the taxpayers mm. from them because one of their kings went bankrupt and so made a deal that we give them an allowance and we get a bunch of the rent. Mm. And if they went as a private family again, who were just, you know, Mr. and Mrs., they would actually make far more money mm. just on the rent on the land alone. And I can only imagine just how much in tourism Buckingham Palace brings in like yeah this is like this is just the classic argument and debate over you know do the royal family bring in more than they take from the taxpayers purse i don't actually i don't actually know the answer and what the correct thing is but like monarchists and republicans constantly are arguing about this point maybe i should look into it it seems kind of boring maybe i should look into it people yeah. going like just you, spending money in the area because that's hard to measure you don't even have to get to yeah. it before you even figure out, actually, no, we're making money. It this. must be so much money. And then, even then, right, it's the, the cultural prestige. Buckingham, pa Buckingham Palace would still be there, so it's a fickle argument. Um, I don't know, I don't agree with it, but I think the counter-argument people make to that is, well, you know, the royal family are the reason people go to Buckingham Palace. Get rid of the royal family, people are less likely to want to go to, the Buck to Buckingham Palace. But then I suppose if you abolish the royal family and seize, like, Buckingham Palace you could have it as a museum or something, and maybe that might bring in more tourism. Yeah, maybe I'll watch the Sean video. Of having an institution that goes back in an unbroken lineage almost. I just, I just think this debate over like the abolition of the monarchy is just pointless. I just don't think... Uh, there's no political will for it. No political party, no serious political party is going to run on it. No one's going to vote for a party on the basis of it, okay? The amount of people whose issue is the abolition of the royal family are so fucking small because people, most people even that don't like the royal family have got more pressing concerns than the existence of the royal family, you know? Yeah, sure. It could, it, you know, it could, I don't know either way. It could be that you abolish them and it's fine. My position, I think, more so is just that um, it isn't a pressing issue for me because I just don't think it's politically viable. I don't think anyone is particularly interested in pushing for it. And it just seems like a waste of political capital to try and push for that sort of thing from any party that's going to get elected. Um, so I just, I just think that debating about it is a moot point. You're better off just accepting it for what it is and, and pushing for us to retain the system that we've got where the monarch doesn't have any influence, significant influence or power over the legislation that gets passed. They essentially just rubber stamp whatever the parliament says. Very brief period where Oliver Cromwell was doing Puritan things. To Alfred the Great. Like, this is 1,200 years. You can't, like, you know, you can't make that. <coughs> you can't fabricate that. You can't put a price on such a thing. And so, like, you know, these losers who are like, oh, we want a republic. And I was watching the Vara Media stream. As some retard, like, super chatted in. I want a republic of the UK. You want a republic of the United Kingdom. Din, 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 din. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> At what point is he going to get that? Exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, the hosts on the Vara Media, like, yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? It's like, idiots. Anyway, BBC4 was apparently the worst, though, because BBC4, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a Radio 4. <clears throat> it's uh, where the, the snobbish Blairites listen and think they're better than everyone. Uh, apparently, someone was listening to it and just tweeted out a bunch of uh, statements that they heard. BBC Radio 4 is busy telling us about how the monarchy is... I mean, listen, guys, we get it, okay? There's some cringe people saying some cringe shit. I don't know, man. Like, I like talking about this stuff, but Jesus, like, what even is this? At odds with society, which values equality, diversity, and inclusivity. 
So the monarchy is at odds with posh communists. Also, also, it's funny as well, because Paul Joseph Watson himself is like, was an avowed Republican and anti-monarchist just like 10 years ago. But again, it's like Russell Brand, the times changed. His audience want people to say, no, no, don't fucking say sh the queen is racist. And so he jumps on board with that take. It's crazy. Yeah, good. That's kind of the point. Yeah. Uh, by design almost <laughs> it's, it's not odds with you know the millions of people who are going to go and see the queen in state and going to go give their flowers and show their respect it's not odds with the kingdom we live in <laughs> but you know uh, the monarchy is about white inherited privilege no no it's definitely it, about privilege. It, yeah, it, it's about blood privilege, yeah. which is not about being white. Yeah. Because why am I not entitled? Wait, hang on. This is just some dude on Twitter. Fuck me. This is mental. I mean, sure. Maybe I would argue they should be um, neutral. Like, I didn't like the fact they had this fucking announcement of the Queen and they did the music and they did the fucking fan cam of the Queen. But, like, yeah, I, d I don't know. If you're going to have these very positive representations, I don't have a problem with a very negative criticism either. I'll talk a place in it, then. Exactly. Where's my crown? Uh, the, why does Dr. Shola have a crown? Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's this white privilege helping yeah. black people? <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not, black people have kings and queens, too. Uh, yeah. It's at odds with our multi-faith, multi-ethnic society. Uh, great work from our national broadcaster, of course, this person tweets. Uh, they Defund the BBC? Yeah, abs absolutely. Oh, sorry, no, it was on BBC4. I got it wrong. I mean, okay. I, 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 so what, the BBC is not allowed to express any negative criticism of the royal family? That seems crazy to me. I think that I would support the right of a programme to have an editorial decision to make a positive or negative statement about the Queen. Absolutely. And if, if, if there has been no, a break with the past... What? Okay, the BBC... Can Wait, go. aren't these guys the fucking free speech lot? I just, I honestly, I'm, I don't understand where we are now with like, is free expression to be supported and allowed or not? Like, it's crazy. You know, if the like, what, what have they said that's that bad? You can disagree with it, but that's the point of public discourse and, dis and opinion is you disagree with it and say, I think this is wrong. Here's why. It seems like they want to censor this. It's over and that's it. The BBC can go. We don't need an imperial broadcaster anymore. No, we do not. And uh, we we get the next one, which is a decolonization bad from the New York Times. It's like, wait, what? Decolonization bad? We should not what? romanticize her era. No, no, that's I mean, that's literally what they're saying, right? Now, Maya it's time to push Genesoff, Cornish Independent. Professor of History at Harvard says we should not romanticize her era. The Queen helped obscure a bloody history of decolonization, whose proportions and legacies have yet to be adequately acknowledged. So Harvard isn't a university anymore. Imagine having a professor of history that thinks that. Well, I mean, what are we supposed oh. to do? So, okay, the Indians and Pakistanis are massacring oh. each other. Right, but they didn't want us in charge. We, we literally said, bye. Yeah, it's not our responsibility to... No, you should have sent the army back in. Yeah, and, and... recolonised them so they didn't kill each other. So what? I've actually had this. Um, Idi Amin's taken over. Oh, well, sorry, <laughs> how's that been a problem? I've met some people who have Indian heritage who have argued to me that the British did this. And I literally just look at them in awe. They're like, we weren't there. They're like, yeah, that was the problem. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so no. what was wrong with us owning it to begin with then? <laughs> exactly, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, well, you know, you actually have a responsibility to come here and make sure that... I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I don't think you can account for, like, these sort of almost tribal, like, disagreements that occur between nations... Like, yeah, that's that's the reality in a lot of parts of the world is you have these kind of like vicious, bitter fights between different castes or different ethnicities. And that exists all around the world. Um, I, I don't know how responsible England is for playing into that. I don't, I don't really know. But um, yeah, that's just the sad reality is that people around the world bitterly fight on the basis of essentially lines in the sand. But it is what it is keep the pieces kept religious like, well, religious stuff we as did well. do that and then you whine trusted. <laughs> you complain about it huh. but uh but i thought um uh george prime had a great response to all of this all of this george alexopoulos fantastic cartoonist go follow him by the way uh, everything he does is brilliant but uh, he's got a great great couple of tweets here empire bad bitch your life is dope and you wrote this on twitter in english with your university education if it wasn't for that evil empire you'd be carrying Jesus. a jug of water on your head right now <laughs> I just, I'm just sick of it. Yeah. Boom. Absolutely 
done. Uh, he goes on, but uh, but we'll leave that on there. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Heaters, you can go to lotusheaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Contemplation series. That- I mean, it's a bit obvious, isn't it? Yeah. He's watched Jungle... That fella's watched Jungle Book one too many times, if you ask me. 